Welcome back to the second half of our contest evening, the evaluation portion of our contest. I will give the speaking order for the speech evaluation contest at this time. The speaking order is contestant number one, Linda Ennigenberg. Contestant number two, Maureen Raywald. Contestant number three, Tim Bolger. In order for our evaluation contestants to compete, we need someone to speak for them. Please help me welcome to the, to the lectern, Kurt Tawatsky. Kurt's speech title, The First Time and the Last Time I Skied. Please help me welcome Kurt Tawatsky. <laughs> Many of you know, this, it's been a while since I've been up here, so you'll have to bear with me if I don't follow the etiquette properly. How many of you snow ski? Avidly? Ah, uh, okay. Actually, I find the sport probably one of the most brutal, humiliating things <laughs> I've ever done in my life. I first skied in February 1988. And if you remember that time, the Calgary games were going on. So it was this motivational thing that got me, hey, i got to do this. Now, kind of backing up a little bit, I'm a California boy. I grew up in South, <coughs> Southern California, laying on the beach, soaking up sun. So to me, snow was something that was out the back window on the San Gabriel Mountains, and everybody goes, oh, isn't that nice? Never thinking you'd have to play in it. Anyway. February 1988, a friend of mine and I, his name is Randy, decide we're going to take this sport up. Never done it before in my life, had no idea, but man, these guys on TV, they look great doing it, so I'm going to try it. So, we had done a little research and tried to figure out where the best place was. Now, growing up here in the Midwest, you would think someplace like Wilmot Mountain, well, what we found out is people told us you got to go west, you got to go to Colorado, you got to go to Utah. So, we had airline connections, we were off, Salt Lake City, Utah, and we wound up at the Brighton Ski Resort, and for purposes of geography, it's about 35 minutes north, northwest of Salt Lake City. During the 2002 Olympic Games, Park City, Utah, which is right next door, okay, held most of the downhill skiing events. So we got ourselves ready to go. Boy, I tell you, we got the whole nine yards. We got the clothes. We got the hats. We got everything, man. We might not look good skiing, but we're going to look good. <laughs> First day we're there. Get to the slope. Well, what do you want to do? Well, got to get equipment. No skis, no poles, no nothing. We got to get equipment. And we should probably take a lesson. Lesson, yeah. So we go up to the cash register, talk to them about lessons, and decided we're pretty athletic. <clears throat> we'll take the two-day beginner lesson. Two days. Great. Each lesson's only an hour. We can do it. Okay. Equipment. Great. Let's go in. We're going to get the boots, the skis, everything. So first thing they do is they send you in. They sit you down in this chair, just like buying a pair of shoes. <clears throat> Put the thing on your foot. Well, you look like you're about a 10. I wear a 10 and a half shoe. Well, it looks like you're a 10. Now, all of you who have skied, put on a ski boot, right? Now, keep in mind, I'd never had a ski boot on in my life. So they put this thing on. Girl's looking at it. She says, can you move your foot? Yeah, a little. That's too loose. So you tighten it up. How does it feel now? Oh, great. Okay, get the other one on. Stand up. <laughs> sure. <laughs> she gives me her hand. I stand up. <clears throat> Man, I feel like Herman Munster. Did you ever remember Herman Munster walking? She says, now you go down to the end of the aisle there to get your skis. 
In these? Yeah, I just walked out. <laughs> so here I go. About two minutes later, we get down to where the skis are. The guy says, how big a ski you want? And I said, well, one about, uh, about that long. No, you're kind of tall. You need these. Really? <laughs> cool. All right. <laughs> so he says, sit down. So I sit down. He says, put your foot up. Do I have to? Put your foot up. Put your, okay. So I put my foot up, and they sized the binding to it. Put it, you know, binding on the ski. Say, so, okay, stand up. Oh, stand up. Now put your foot in there. Put my foot in where? Put your foot in the binding. Okay. <coughs> Ooh. Now, the first sensation of having your feet grow by about 15 times and not being able to move, it's a very, very weird sensation. Guy tells me to lean forward. Lean forward? He says, lean forward. So I bend over like this. He says, no, lean forward. And he kind of pushes my hips. Bang, the binding snaps right on the floor. <laughs> now, giggled a little bit. This wasn't an unfortunate accident. It turns out this was an omen. <laughs> so they finally adjusted him, get the skis on. I said, oh, you're in the beginner class. I want you to go out this door over here. Great. Go out the door. Meet the teacher. Blonde, blue-eyed, Aryan, by the name of Lars. <laughs> kind of talk like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He says, I want you up there. I said, no, wait a minute. When you ski, aren't you supposed to go down there? He says, I want you up there. This is how you do it. You go up the hill like this. Okay. So we watched him and said, yeah, it looks pretty easy. Two steps, fall over. <laughs> Get myself up. Two, three more steps, fall over. My buddy Randy's in back. He's going through the same thing. Two more steps, fall over. Well, what they didn't tell you is you got to keep your feet straight. So here we are trying to do this and this. And so. Skis are getting tangled up. We fall over. Well. After a few minutes of this, we finally get up to the top. Lars is there. He says, the first lesson is we're going to teach you how to fall. <laughs> <laughs> I just fell going all the way. Wait, can we skip that part? I want to learn how to stand up. We're going to teach you how to fall. So for about 15, 20 minutes, you fall over, stand up, fall over, stand up, fall over, stand up. Now, the other thing about this beginning class is here Randy and I are 30-year-old men, and we're in this class with about, I don't know, a dozen four- to six-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, they fall over, they pop right up. Laura says, they're embarrassing you. Why can't you stand up quick? I said, they're shorter. They don't have as far to go. <laughs> anyway, class goes on. They teach us this thing called snowplow. So we turn the skis in, learn the snowplow. Great. At the end of the class, Laura says, I'm going down to the bottom of the hill. You ski to me, I catch you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the first dozen kids go, yeah, he caught him great. Randy and I are left up there. Now, Randy is five foot nine, probably weighs 180 pounds. I'm five foot 13, way <laughs> more than Randy. <laughs> Lars is about six foot tall, weighs about 180 pounds. So, we said, are you sure? He says, yes, come down. Randy goes. Perfect snowplow. Until he gets about halfway down. Boom, skis come apart, takes off like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Smashes right into Lars. Who catches him? I'm left. He says, come on. I said, are you sure, man? <laughs> come on. Got in my tuck. Wow, snowplow, this is pretty easy. Well, all of a sudden, I think it was because of lack of blood, my feet forgot <laughs> how to snowplow. <laughs> my skis come apart, point straight, and I'm off. The last thing I saw before impact was Lars like this. <laughs> I hit him probably going 20, 25 miles an hour, and I stop, and I'm waiting. <laughs> I don't hear anything, I'm stopped, but I don't see Lars. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I look over, and at the end of this run, there was a gully with a net in the bottom. I know why they put the net there. <laughs> That's where Lars was. Kind of half days and everything like that. And of course, I looked at him like he had told me all before, going, get up! <laughs> well, next day comes, they put us out onto the mountain. Now, you think they would have told you, they have a ski lift, chair lift, right? Do you know there's a trick for getting onto those? We didn't know. <laughs> So we're standing there, boom, here comes the ski lift to pick us up. The guy says, you know how to sit down and get on the lift. And we turn around and said, what? Well, by that time we got hit and the skis fell off. The entire lift on Brighton Mountain, Brighton Mountain, is shut down while we're putting our skis back on. We finally get to the top of the mountain for the second day of our beginner's class. And we're way up at the top of the mountain. And they're showing the little kids this and that. And they said, well, lesson number two is done. Get down. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I'm going to get down snow plowing, right? Well, I made it about halfway down, and there's some fellows that patrol the mountain. They have a about that color, orange. It says National Ski Patrol on the back. We got to be very good friends the last half of the run. Uh, my buddy Randy did manage to go off the run. We had to pull him out with a rope. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. And for the last probably 40 yards we walked down. End of day two, we were going to try day three, and surprisingly enough, <laughs> we went to the snowmobile rental. <laughs> that was the last day I skied. I still have this memory from those two days. Occasionally I'll wear it on the beach. <laughs> 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 We will now give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluations. Mr. and Mr. Mr. Sergeant Arms, will you please escort the contestants out of the room in time five minutes for them beginning when they are seated in the room. When that five minutes is over... When that five minutes is over... Escort our first contestant back into the room. You can go with it. Can you give us five minutes? Okay, while the evaluation contestant completes their evaluations, we will get to know our target speaker. Please help me welcome Kurt Sawaski back to the lecture. <laughs> welcome, Kurt. Thanks for providing that service to our club today. No problem. So, Kurt, some of us in the room know you. Some of us have known you for quite a while. I've known you for three years myself, but some of us in the room have, don't know you at all. Can you give us a little bit of a little rundown in your history with Toastmasters? Well, I first became a Toastmaster, and I'm going to have to kind of look at May Lee for a little help on this. I first became a Toastmaster in 1998. I was one of the charter members of the club. So it was 98, I believe. Uh, I'd gotten involved in it, had done a few speeches. Uh, actually, I was talking with Tim out there. Uh, I've actually done more target speaking than I have speaking out of the manuals. <laughs> so, um, but then for one reason or another, I drifted away, primarily because of my occupation, my job. Uh, I became more involved with the church. So, and now as those commitments are starting to wear down, or I shouldn't say wear down, die down, let's say. I'm um, getting more back into this. Oh, 
it's nice to have you with us. Nice to have you with us tonight, as a matter of fact. But we'd like to know, what actually did bring you to the Midwest? Well, my father got transferred. Uh, when I was two, my dad, I was born in Milwaukee. My father got transferred to Southern California, Burbank, when I was two. We went out there, and I didn't move back to the Midwest until I was 14, just going into high school. So the other thing that I found when I moved back here is I had talked a little bit about the snow in the mountains and stuff. I didn't understand why you had to shovel that white stuff too <laughs> off the driveway. You know, I told my father, you know, and <laughs> my dad always thought I'd be a litigator. But I said, Dad, you know, all it's got to do is get above 32 degrees and it'll go away and we don't have to shovel it. And he said, yeah, it'll go away in the spring. Here. <laughs> so so but anyway, you were, a you were in California from the time you were two until you were 14. Yes, I grew up in Southern California in the fabulous 60s. Wow. Yeah, so so. Were you, did you leave California kicking and screaming, or were, were you uh, to go? I did ask a couple neighbors if they wanted to adopt a son, but that didn't go over quite well. <laughs> uh, I guess kind of kicking and screaming. And so. you see that snow shovel now in the middle of winter? Does it make you wish I live you in were... a condo. I pay oh. somebody to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Very thoughtful. So I'm just curious, have you... How, are you, have you Continue to nurture your relationship with Lars over the years? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I did see him <laughs> the second day coming through the lodge, and uh, he was sitting in a chair. He actually probably was not working that day. He was in street clothes. He didn't have his normal, you know, tight little thing on that these guys normally wear. And he kind of glared at me as I walked by, and all I did was smile and said, it's your fault, pretty boy, it's not <laughs> <laughs> And so how many times have you been skiing in your life? Twice. Twice. <laughs> Those two days. <laughs> Those two days. <laughs> that was the beginning days. and the end. Wow, well, thank you for your, for your service to our group as, a, as, as, as our target speaker. You served as tar target speakers for other clubs as well. And yeah. How many clubs do you belong to? Or have you belonged um, to your... Actually, it wasn't... The clubs I belong to it was the clubs that Michaeline knew of, yes, and right. uh, well, I've done target speaking for the Crystal Lake clubs, uh, one in Libertyville, the one in Barrington. So and yeah, I was kind of tallying all that up, and that number was higher than the number of speeches I did in the club. That's good to know. The target speaking is a valuable service that that people provide for clubs to to give folks an opportunity to participate in evaluation contests. So. If we didn't have your service tonight, we'd still we'd be looking for someone for sure. But it's certainly a pleasure to have you with us tonight. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Any questions for uh, for our target speaker while we wait for the last few minutes? And any? Well, when you came back here, did you, did you move to Chicago right. or Milwaukee? No, Madam Contest Chair, can you transfer to Wheeling actually? So the Chicago area. Okay. So yeah, since 1970. Still have family up in Milwaukee? Lots. My both sides. My parents. Uh, my mother's family is from Green Bay. My father's family is from Milwaukee. So. So you got cheese in your veins. <laughs> you <bet>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the Packers in the bloodline because two of my mother's uncles were on the board of directors from the 40s all the way through the 60s. Wow. Yeah, my father was uh, kind of a semi bear fan, so Sunday afternoons in my house usually were pretty loud, <laughs> especially during Packer Bear Week. My loyalties are definitely with the Chicago team. There's a candidate got out of Notre Dame or Wisconsin. He played with the Packers the first. He was a rookie, starting rookie up at Bolaga. Oh, we will now begin.
the speech evaluation portion of our contest. We are ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. There will be one minute of silence before the first contestant and between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light, with, with the green light when <coughs> one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. We will now begin the speech evaluation contest. Linda Ennigenberg, evaluation contestant number one. Evaluation contestant number one, Linda Ennigenberg. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and especially Kurt, there in the back. Thank you for coming up and speaking. I loved how you jumped right out here and you engaged us immediately out of the box by asking us a question. Who's ever skied? Fantastic way of engaging us, holding us accountable to listen to your speech. Because when you ask a question, in the back of our minds you're thinking, oh, I better sit up straight or he's going to ask me again. Brought us in immediately. Fantastic job. A couple things I loved was your use of visual aids. I can't tell you how many times I've seen speakers that use visual aids for the sake of using visual aids. <clears throat> Both of yours, the hat and the chair, highly effective, very appropriate, extremely well used. You sat down in the chair and you put your leg out. They wanted to point out that that was very purposeful. Fantastic job doing that. You are a very humorous guy. We just had a humorous contest, and I think you ought to consider doing that in the future. Very funny, extremely engaging. A couple opportunities for you to make really a super presentation. <clears throat> Step it up to the next level. First of all, don't apologize for anything. Came right out here. I'm sorry, whatever. Not necessary. We only know you have something to apologize for if you tell us. If you don't tell us, it's going to go over our heads. We won't know. Secondly, more eye contact. And there's a reason for that that I'm going to get deeper into towards the end. But more eye contact. You made some eye contact, but I want to see three, four, five seconds. So if Gary's sitting here nodding off, you're going to yank him back in your speech by making him look in your eye. More of that, and then you go from person to person. And finally, you really like the timer side of the room. So give this side equal do and give us some attention over, over here, especially our guest in the side. I want to end up with things I really most loved about your speech. First of all, you did something genius. You chose a topic that appealed to everybody. Many times we hear sports speeches, it doesn't appeal to everybody because we think, well, I'm not a champion skier. You gave the everyday man's speech. We can all relate to doing something for the first time and falling on our behinds. <clears throat> super, super topic choice was the first element of a great speech. And this is where I wanted to get back into the eye contact and where you need to really get in there and capitalize on what you do best and what you do best comes natural to you. I know you haven't worked at it. You are extremely likable. When you're up here, you're this affable, likable, easygoing guy. And if you combine that with the eye contact and you just be yourself, Kurt, <coughs> out of the ballpark. Super job, and thank you. Thank you for speaking for us tonight. And we have one minute of silence. Please, timer, while the judges mark the ballot. Can you put one minute in the timer?
Our next contestant, Maureen Raywald. Evaluation contestant number two. Evaluation contestant number two, Maureen Raywald. Toastmasters and guests. Kurt, I really felt like I was on the slopes with you when you started your journey. I was very impressed with the introduction when you first had the audience participate by asking them if they'd ever been skiing. Uh, I thought that was a great way to initially uh, include the audience and get them involved. And then you gave some details and specifics about the trip. I thought it followed sequentially, very logically, and the sequencing of events kind of unfolded before our eyes. You used great eye contact, great volume in your voice, the tone of your voice, your facial expressions were great. I felt particularly when you were all dialed up in your um, outfits that you had just bought, looking good. <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, I felt like you know, we were there watching you try on your your boots and your uh, other paraphernalia. The um, again, uh, the de details were uh, very good. Your description of the slopes. Um, initially, when you talked about looking at the slopes in a distance, and now here you were right in the store on the mountain. That compare and contrast was very good. The uh, events with the boots was very good. Uh, the uh, use of the word omen was good. We kind of thought that maybe something not so good was coming up, and that's indeed how it went. And the instructions on the slopes were also very good with the original teacher Lars, uh, I could just picture him with you and your friend, and the sequencing of those um, and the um, lessons was was very good. You had a more dramatic tone as things went on. The um, <clears throat> the three hills that you had to climb initially, you walked up the hill, which I thought was very strange. I mean, I've been skiing a couple times, and I don't remember any instructor having you do that, but I don't know what his reasoning was. I'm sure he had a good one. Uh, nonetheless, uh, when you did actually go down the hill, uh, and the, uh, the events that led to your, your crash and your friend's crash was, was quite an event. The cap, I thought, was a great prop that you used initially, and it followed you all the way to the end and the ending was I, I think was very good uh, when you you know flipped it a little bit and uh, said what you did about seeing uh, that again at the beach overall I thought maybe a couple more props would have been better uh, added to the, the journey Timer, maybe you have one minute on the timer. Have one minute of silence while the judges mark the ballot. Tim Bulger, evaluation contestant number three. Evaluation contestant number three, Tim Bulger. Fellow 
the Toastmasters and guests, and especially Kurt. Kurt, I liked your speech. Had a, a lot of good story and essence of comedy involved in it. You know, you had the logical beginning. You had a, a good story, which is what the essence of good comedy is all about. Now, I'm not going to be getting into a lot of the basics of the speech because you have a lot of the basics mastered already. And really what I want to get into a little bit on your speech is just some of the more advanced things that you could probably do to really kick it up a notch. You know, get that speech into either a comedy club or a uh, some kind of a Toastmasters evaluation contest, perhaps. The first thing you got to remember, though, is don't apologize <clears throat> when you first start your speech. You were, did that a little bit too much. You had some good audience participation when you tried to bring them in. But you need to do something with your stinking hands. They were all like all over the place. You need to get uh, your gestures a little bit better much. And you went into a little bit too much detail in setting up your story for your speech. I like the narrative that was done about the classes. But what you could have really done there to kick it up a notch is use the technique of what we call voices. Keep the voice as the instructor when you're using this so on. And then use your normal voice when you're talking about something else. And then maybe something higher for your friend. You needed to be a little bit more coordinated again with your gestures. You just needed to, when you did your hands at the side, or when you were skiing, or maybe a little bit more animation when putting on the boots and things, you had a good job and a good start at it, but a little bit more exaggeration of those gestures probably would have proven to be a lot more effective in building the suspense for comedy. And the other thing you could have done is something what I call blocking techniques. You have your instructor over here. You are here. And your friend is over here. Comedic essence is best done with a little bit of exaggeration and a lot of sarcasm. In short, Excellent speech. I think it's got the really good makings for a good comedy club speech or perhaps even a Toastmasters humorous speech contest. Mr. Toastmasters. Will everyone please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots and have them collect collected by the ballot counters? Yeah. The name of the speech or what? No, just put your name down. I want to get some. Uh, oh. Anybody wants a DVD of the meeting, I'm going to make it available for free. I'll just okay. copy them and duplicate them, and then you know, just I just want to make sure who gets some like, who's here. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I just just pass it, pass it around. We have all the ballots.
while we are waiting for our judges to come back after counting the votes, I would like to give you a little bit of news about the upcoming events in District 30. Since it's my role as area governor to apprise you of these events, my first responsibility is to tell you that on October 27th is our district conference, Yay. the fall conference. And that is where the winners of our division contest after they have won their area contest and their respective club contest will end up and participate in the fall humorous and evaluation contest. And that is going to be, you can't see the flyer here, but I'm holding it up since it's the only colored flyer that I have. And there's plenty of opportunities to I got some flyers with me if you wish. But save that date. It's Saturday, October 27th, and it's at the Holiday Inn in Willowbrook. And if you wish, you can register online right now at, toast, at district30toastmasters.org. Or d30toastmasters.org. Yeah. D30, d30toastmasters.org, yes. So save that date, October 27th, and you're going to really hear some great speakers. And Craig Valentine, who is a 19, well, what year did he win the International Speech Contest? 1999, Craig Valentine will be speaking on the power of performance. But before all that happens, we'll have, we have to have an area contest. And our area contest, the winners of our club contest in Area 1 will advance to the area contest, which is on September 6th. September 18th at the uh, Algonquin Township Hall. So if anybody needs directions, we would love to have, all, have you all there. We would love to have you all take the opportunity to be trained as contest judges so that you can participate as a judge in the area contest if you wish. In order to be an area contest judge, you need to have completed six competent communicators six pieces in the competent communicator manual. But that doesn't mean anybody can't come and serve in some way or, be, or, or just enjoy the, the evening. So if you need more information on that, I can certainly give it to you. Other clubs in the area having their contests are crystal clear at 7.30 7 in the morning on Thursday, August 23rd. On Monday, August 27th is the Cary Grove Postmasters Club meeting at 7 p.m. And on Wednesday, August 29th, is the Toast of Algonquin contest. And Crystal Lake Toastmasters had their contest on August 4th. So, having said that, I see that our... Tim? I am passing a list around if anybody wants a DVD of this uh, meet contest. Uh, just put your name on the list and I'll make sure you have one by next meeting. Thanks, Tim. And just so you know, one of the best things about the fall conference is the Achievers Breakfast. <laughs> Great opportunity to participate in the conference and, 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 and be recognized as an achiever. So if you have an education award that you've achieved between the, our last conference and our next conference, we will be inviting you to participate in the Achievers Breakfast, so please shoot for that opportunity. Any other announcements? Oh. You're going to do the contestant interviews. I'm going to do what? The contestant interviews. Okay, are we ready for that now? Yeah. Can we do that? We go ahead with it now? All right, great. Do you want two minutes on the clock? Yeah, thank you. Now, since Two of our contestants participated in both contests. How about if we do that in the order, we order, we'll interview our newest contestant first, and then Maureen, Tim, and Linda. How's that? Sure. Does that work for everyone? Sure. All right, please help me welcome back to the lectern, Nilu. Nilu, please. There's an interview. Join me. Any questions? I just have, would like to congratulate you, you as a member of Fox Valley Toastmasters. I don't need to ask you how long you've been a Toastmaster. Nilou's <laughs> 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 this is Nilou's first speech in Toastmasters. She's, she's been a member since. Yeah. 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 So congratulations. Nice to have you with us. Thank you.
But I, I noticed a few things on your on your bio. Your employer is Midwest Pally. No, wait. This is my I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound right. I had it right here. Wrong bio. It's right here. Okay. Yes. Your employer is Chase Bank. Yes, I am. Yes. And you're you've been in the banking banking industry how long? Uh, about seven years. Seven years. Yes. And you talked about your interests. What are your interests? Reading books. You like to read books. Yes. And you're an avid reader. Yes, I am. Oh. Highly commendable. Highly commendable. One of your I noticed here in your in your bio that uh, one of your notable accomplishments. You have honor students. Two, two of your children are honor students. No, I am. I was. A you were an honor student. Oh. Yes, I am. Congratulations with that. And you have two children. Yes, I do. And how old are they? Uh, six and three. Oh. Uh, wow. Uh, six and three. Yeah. Wow. That is, I, my heart goes out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on that. Thank you. I, uh, Thank you. Yeah. So, Nilo and. Out of gratitude from Fox Valley Toastmasters, this is a certificate of appreciation for you participating in our humor. Thank you so much. Nice. Thank you. All right, we're going to ask Maureen Raywald to come to the lectern. Maureen. Maureen. Congratulations on your participation as a, in the evaluation contest. Thank you. I'm back to looking for your bio again. <laughs> <laughs> your bio says that you're a hospice nurse. Right. We've heard some of your stories in, in some of your speeches, but we have. I think I think we still have a lot. To, uh, some you have probably have more stories for us to share of your experience with Midwest Palliative and Hospice Care Center in Glenview. Right. That's, that's your place of employment. Yes. It's far away from here. <laughs> 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 but I love it so much. It's, it's, you know, it's a challenge in the morning, but I realize I'm learning more about current events that I never did before. <gasps> so am I listening to the top radio or NPR other fan. stations? Yeah. Getting more educated. Okay. All Politics. Right. Okay. <laughs> we we certainly are educating each other. You your notable accomplishments are you you're earning your last degree as a PhD in nursing. Wow. I did not wow. realize you had a PhD in nursing. Wow. Right. You don't hear that very often. That's a rare commodity. Right. Wow. That's quite an accomplishment in itself. My wife is a kind of EDD, so right. I am. I can, I can relate with the, with the amount of energy that goes into doing something like that. You are currently serving as our club secretary. How, how long have you been a member of Toastmasters in uh, Fox Valley now? Well, yes, probably, well, this, my, this is my second year. The first year I missed half of it because my husband was ill, but mm. I'm back in it now. So. Well, nice to have you back, Maureen. Yeah. And, and as per, signifying our gratitude to you for participating in our contest. This is a All right, please help me welcome Tim Bolger to the podium. Thank you for participating in both our contests this evening. Thanks, Steve. You, you uh, help us raise the bar when it comes to participation in, in uh, Toastmasters. I understand you have been a member of District 30, involved with the Toastmasters activities Chicagoland area-wide for quite a few years now. Yes, I have. Um, I've been a member since 2000. Uh, was here when the first year of the club started. I've served as area governor four times. Uh, I was District 30 Sergeant at Arms for a period of about five years straight. And I've 
done various other roles, including uh, club club secretary, uh, vice president of public relations, vice president of membership. I've never been a club president, but this year at another club, I've decided to take on the treasurer role, which is the first time for me. And there's always a fresh challenge involved. In which club? Uh, top Toastmasters, Toastmasters on Purpose. It's an advanced yeah. club that meets in, uh, right now, at Harper College. And how many clubs do you belong to? Just two. President? I can't afford to join more. <laughs> <laughs> we understand, we understand. So, and you, your current employer is Franklin Distributors, but that's certainly not your passion. No. Right? Your passion I, is? Videography, of course. Mm -hmm. Videography and movie making, if, if nobody's figured out that out by now. Mm -hmm. What I do around the district is I take a lot of events and uh, put them up on a website called timsvideo.com and they're there for the taking. There's well over 100 plus hours of Toastmasters content up there, so I would encourage everybody to take a look. And it's easy to remember, timsvideo.com. You just look there, click, and you'll see it. I cannot make it any easier. <laughs> I cannot make it any easier. <laughs> Tim's Look, Thank you very much, Tim. We, sure. we <laughs> certainly appreciate your participating in our contest tonight, and good luck finding your first time. Thank you. And please help me welcome Linda Ennigenberg to the post to the lecture. Linda. Just pick any bio there, Dean. <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> That one is blank. <laughs> Linda, just give us a brief overview of your journey with Toastmasters in 30 seconds. Sure in 30 seconds? Yeah. Uh, it's not possible. Do, go for it. Try it. Four or five and six clubs at some points. Past area governor, past division governor, president, VPPR, VP membership, VP education, and Good job. That really <laughs> tells us a lot about your involvement with Toastmasters. How about DTM? Oh, yeah, DTM oh. too. I was just about to ask you, what is your current level of education in Toastmasters? I'm a distinguished Toastmaster. A distinguished Toastmaster. Can you briefly tell us what that, just briefly tell us what that journey involves? A truckload of work. <laughs> a truckload of work. All right? Well, we can't begin to imagine those of us that are trying to try to put our first steps into that journey. So we're happy, we're happy to have you as a member of our club to guide us along, and, and like so many so many of our founding members here that are still with us to to guide us through that journey and, and tell us, and encourage us, and tell us we can make it. Tell me something about this roller skating thing. <laughs> Who always asked? I used to be an avid roller skater. Competitive roller skating, and yes, it does exist. Mm -hmm. And we did not see it in the Summer Olympics because it is not in the Olympics. It should be because artistic rolling is just, roller skating is just like what you see in artistic ice skating. Mm -hmm. You know, the jumps and spins and the figures, which are not really on TV, but same thing. We just never made the Olympics. Wow, very interesting. Mm -hmm. How do you fit all this in? And in, in you're like you're also a, a full time. Associate appointee with Aon Hewitt. Aon Hewitt, a metrics analyst. Metrics analyst and for Aon Hewitt. It just got a little bit easier because now my son is back up here with me, and he's such a big help to me. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Linda. It's nice to have you and your son with us. And I'm going to give you a quick And our target speaker, Kurt, please come Yay. up one more time. We very much appreciate your participation in our contest tonight, George. Thanks so much for, for being with us. While we're doing thank you, Dean, I would like to thank you for serving as our Toastmaster today. Please accept, accept the Certificate of Appreciation for participation. Thank you. Yeah. And if I could please go to our Chief Judge.
have a contest without contestants, and we can't have a contest without judges. So I would like to thank you for participating as our chief judge and guiding our judges, ballot counters, sergeant at arms, timers to make this contest happen. Thank you for participating. I'm sorry, Mr. May I? Yes. Briefly. I would like to commend our contest chair because no one gave her a certificate and applauded for her. So can we thank our contest chair? Thank you. Thank you. We wouldn't have a contest without a contest chair. That's, right. That's what it takes. It takes someone first to step up and serve as contest chair. Usually it's generated from our, through our Vice President of Education and serves his responsibility, his or her responsibility to, to be or select the, the contest chair. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And Michaeline has great experience with Toastmasters and, and painlessly guides us through the, this process, which I can make look painful sometimes. So thank you, Michaeline. I appreciate it. And now it's my responsibility as the postmaster, and you know what? Before we do the announcements, can we ask our guests for comments because the winner should be the last thing we say. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. See, she guides us through the process. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, would you like to please, as a as a member of Toastmasters and a club ambassador? Please uh, share with us a few words about your... Uh, absolutely, Pete Russell. I'm with JSC Toastmasters. We were chartered in March. Uh, we're a closed club, and um, we're basically a networking group for people that have become unemployed or downsized, looking for a new position. Henceforth, you'll notice that I ask you all for your business cards and LinkedIn, <laughs> <laughs> because it's not only for me, it's for the other people in my group. Uh, I thought this was a great learning experience. Our club is having their first humorous speech contest on Tuesday. So this was a great learning experience for me. I um, learned how to organize and run a contest at the club level. <laughs> Need that. And by the way, I'm the VP of Public Relations. And you, everybody's email I get, you will be invited to our next social, which is always a good time. I, Dean, I liked you. You always introduce, introduce the contestants twice with their name. And uh, I thought that was good. I thought that uh, you spend a couple minutes with each contestant getting to know them. I thought that was a, a nice, real nice touch. I liked the filming, the video with Tim. I think um, that, was, uh, that was a wonderful thing. <clears throat> and it's something that's a real learning tool. So anybody that gets up to give a speech, can, we can post it online, actually, <laughs> and they can review their own speech and learn from it and understand what the evaluators are saying to them as they watch their speech. I think that's a great learning tool for this type of organization. And um, Linda, something I learned from you tonight hmm. was when you gave your evaluation, you used all that space and commanded it, even during the evaluation, which I've never seen anybody do. So I wound up paying attention more to your evaluation than other people's because you were reaching out. I thought it was good. Oof. I learned something new today, something that we don't do that we can do in the future. So thank you very much. And um, that's it for now on the learning experience and what I've gained. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being a great ambassador from your from your club. So it's a privilege to have you with us. How about Jenny? Would you like to? Okay. Well, I thought everybody did a, gr a really great job, and I appreciate your welcoming me and letting me come in and see how this is kind of run. I this answered some of my questions, and uh, I am interested in coming back, maybe and seeing like a regular meeting to see mm -hmm. how it's run. But I think that this is this is going to be very helpful for me. Thank Welcome. You. Welcome. And we forgot to thank you specifically oh, thank for you. helping with the contest. Oh. <laughs>
since uh, it's a learning experience for me, serving as your Toastmaster, the first opportunity to serve as a contest Toastmaster, is it appropriate that we, since we only had three people in each contest, is it appropriate to only announce the winner of each contest? Mm -hmm. She also got to know the winner up. Pardon? Only the winner. Only There's the only winner. three, okay. they all announced the first. And so, for Fox Valley Toastmasters, the winner, please give me a drum roll, please, for the Fox Valley 2012 Humor Contest winner, Linda Edigenberg. Perfect. Contest is adjourned. Yay! Right. <laughs> <laughs>